bleeds right into the pits. Hear me, right into the pits! <laughs> Deep under Ark, we find the Undercity. Founded by a monster, forged by hardship, built on sin and ruled by a cult, it stagnates as a stained mirror to the city built on top of it. And deep within that, we find the Dust Pit. This is where our story begins. The Dust Pit does not care who you are. All are welcome, all can earn their coin. The Dust Pit only asks that you can fight. As it turns out, there's someone else who cares about your abilities too. At first, things went as expected. Some of the combatants have some interesting tricks up their sleeves, but nothing you weren't prepared for. Then, he appeared. See you dance, Prophet. This is Thariel. He wants you to help him murder a monster. Thariel is a voice of the Father, and as such is one of the top members of the Relata, the cult that runs the Undercity. He selected you to help him finish a plan that's been eight years in the making. He tells you the story of his childhood. He was one of the dozens of children that the father, the leader of the Relata, had experimented on and discarded. The only one that survived. And now, he's in a position to kill him. It's as simple as that. He wants to make the world a better place. He wants to take revenge. He wants to kill them because they deserve it. Over your time with him, he gives you all of these reasons. As we get closer to the father, Thariel reveals more about himself through how he interacts with the dregs of his old life. During his search for a way to get you into the cult, you and him quest for the true manuscript of the Butcher of Ark, who wrote a book that exposed the existence of the Black Libra, a near supernatural cult that hunted down and killed those who had committed great wrongs. More specifically, they were tracking the events that created Emissaries of the End. Some of those who have seen my previous video on Enderal will recognize this term. And this is how our target comes into the picture. Kallian was originally a mentor to the Butcher of Ark. To everyone's surprise, the man who everyone knew as Kallian is now gone. In his place, we now have Nylak, who killed Kallian and now lives a life of torment. When we first hear this, it's easy to assume it's a metaphor. But anyone who's actually read through the entire Butcher of Arc series knows Kallian a little better. You see, Kallian and the Black Libra weren't just murderers. They had an initiation rite that made them nigh invulnerable on top of having near infinite resources to conduct their assassinations. When they killed people, they absorbed their memories. They knew without a doubt that the ones they killed were guilty, or would become guilty. It was this knowledge that led them to the massacre that Kallian is most known for. The massacre that took place 20 years ago. It was at the farmer's coast, around midsummer. The farmers had just put out the lights after a long day's work. Suddenly, shrouded figures showed up out of nowhere, with steel masks covering their faces. They broke into the houses, and killed anybody who dared to stand in their way. While they merely wrecked havoc on most of the farms, any family with a daughter between 12 and 16 winters was less lucky. All in all, these masked people took 10 daughters that night and carried them away. They were found one week later. They lay on the Penny Road, mutilated with their eyes sewn shut. One girl each mile. Before then, the Black Libra was mostly unknown to the world. That is, until Yale Tennyson, the Butcher of Ark, found one target that could be redeemed. At the very moment before he killed that man, he understood that the Black Libra was plagued by zealotry. And that was how he became the first killer to reveal its presence. Kallian, by contrast, seems to be the first killer to survive leaving the Black Libra. Though, now that we understand their rite of initiation includes self-murder, 
and that they were somewhat supernatural, we can question what he means when he says, Nilak shed Kalyan and lives his life as punishment. Thariel doesn't believe him, but that's because Thariel doesn't want to admit that people can be redeemed. He's so set on punishing the guilty regardless of what became of them, that Nilak and Kalyan will always be the same person to him. It's this mindset that comes to light when he realizes that Nilak, as a gopher in the orphanage he lived at, helped the Relata to kidnap the children. It's this mindset that makes him do this. No, what? Nalok doesn't understand. He only... Let's go. Like many choices in Enderal, this is a guaranteed outcome. Thariel is simply too embittered and hateful to allow Nilak to live. However, your choice does have an impact, even if it's only a slight one. Like many choices, that impact is far in the future, and may not always be clear. From here, we begin to learn more about the Relata themselves. They are a transhumanist cult that seeks to leave their bodies behind, seeing them as a chain to the world. Thariel's plan revolves around the Rulata's end goal, which is to reach the center of a temple hidden deep in the mountains that will allow them to discard their bodies. While observing these beliefs, you and Thariel offer the discovered manuscript to the Rulata, giving you an in on a trip to the temple. And here you are given a test. You must kill a wayward voice of the father. This voice, called Sister Pride, or Nessa, is hiding inside a cave deep in an undead infested valley. What's strange about the sister is that her defection from the Relata is not done of her own free will. Through the scraps of journal you find in the cave, it's revealed that her sanity was beginning to slip, ending with her being completely unable to see the faces of the people around her. I can't bear it any longer. Father, Malphus, fate, or whoever is listening, save me. Or I will break. I will run far away from this temple. Far away. Somewhere where nobody knows me, and where nobody sees me, and where I see nobody. Forgive me, Father. I need to leave, or I will break. All that was left was the smooth skin where their faces had dripped off like so much candle wax. When you finally encounter her, you have the option to leave her alive though she begs for death. However you deal with Nessa, you return to the Relata contact and report in. With nothing left to do until they contact you, Thariel decides it's time to do some real digging into his past. You and him head back to the old orphanage he lived at before he was sold to the father to find real proof that Shagun, the orphanage's head, had truly betrayed them. But as you near the abandoned structure, Thariel begins to show strange signs of his own. He starts to see things, and once inside the orphanage, even suffers some sort of regression to his childhood. He talks about the ones that were hurt, and again about Letho. This is the moment where Thariel really opens up. Thariel began life as an orphan, and had an adoptive brother named Letho. Letho was one of the orphans that was killed when the father performed his experiments, but he was also the only thing that kept Thariel alive in the Undercity. When no one ever showed Thariel compassion, Letho took care of him. It was only later that they were both taken in by Shagun, but Letho never stopped being the closest thing that Thariel had to family. It's this anchor that was lost when Shagun betrayed them and sold the kids to the Relata. This was the closest Thariel ever came to feeling any sense of love, and losing it left scars that he's still not ready to face. There is no other person like Letho. And even if there were, I'd keep my distance. The time for these kinds of things has gone. I don't believe in backup anymore. Friends, family, love, they leave you open, exposed. Trust me, I'm quite intact. For me, things are simple. If the father kills me, I have failed, but at least there'll be no one to mourn my loss. No widow, no children, no friends. A clean cut, as though I never existed. I don't know if you can even remotely understand how much I hate this person. 
With little else to say, Thario once more lets you go, only for you to seek him out when you get a strange dream. This dream, as it turns out, is the father's acknowledgement of your application. You are due for a meeting with the man himself. The father is an unusual individual. Meeting him deep within the hidden section of the Rolata Temple, he doesn't have much to say. What we expect of him is some sort of sociopathic individual, willing to twist minds and manipulate souls to accomplish his goals. All of this comes from Thariel, but this is our first time meeting the real version. He shows you the simulacrum he's been working on, a kind of fake body that was engineered long ago by an individual who found a way to transcend his own. Inspired by this, the father seeks to follow in that man's footsteps, leaving this world of vices behind. For the father, bodies are a torment, and clinging to them is a sin. That is why he searches for the temple that you will kill him in, to find a way to leave everything behind. He found that the younger a soul was, the easier it was to transfer it to a new body, and live on in this world without the vices of the original body or the death that would be brought to its soul. That was what he was attempting to do with Thariel and his brethren. And then he asks you what you thought of Thariel. Your choice here doesn't matter, but it does bring the question to mind. You've had numerous opportunities to form an opinion on the man. You've seen the kind of person he is, and the ends he's willing to go to if it means accomplishing his goals. You can answer honestly, or lie, but the father will always say the same thing. You leave, having confirmed your position within the expedition. When you check back in with Thariel, you get one last surprise. Thariel has planned out everything, including what to do with the mercenary you and he will be paired with when you begin your dungeon delve. To him, this mercenary is already marked for death, and nothing you can say will change his mind. If the Relata hired them, they are scum. They are just another necessary sacrifice that has more than earned their place at his feet. It's only when you arrive at the temple and meet the sacrificial mercenary that questions about Thariel's morals begin to arise. Zara is a normal down on her luck mercenary just looking for a way to make a living after returning home. She's here for the work, but doubts she'll ever take another job from the Rolata. She's normal, likable, and completely expendable. As your small group delves deeper into the temple, you get to know her through the interactions with Thariel. Despite Thariel's expectations, she really is just in this to get back on her feet and feels the psychological effects of the temple just as badly as both of you. And just as you feel she may make it through this... But, well, I guess that's life, isn't it? <laughs> it's only on your deathbed as you lie there shitting in your sheets. But the past lets go of you once and for all. Kind of pathetic, isn't it? No. Uh, what? You can admonish Thariel all you want about this, but it won't change anything. Someone had to die to satisfy the temple's toll and allow you into its heart. And it was you or her. Naturally, he chose the person who wasn't here to help him assassinate a cult leader. With Zara's death, the way to the temple is open. We made it, brother. We made the father br ah! <sighs> Yeah, you made him proud. And it's time to face the monster who caused all this death. The plan goes as expected, with both the father and his bodyguard, Brother Sorrow, trapped inside the room of paintings. But the father knows something we don't. Thariel died on the operating table, only to be reborn as one of the only artificial humans in existence. Him, Nessa, and Letho. Do you recognize him, Thero? Uh. Yes, Thero. Letho. His procedure went a little differently. His original body died at the exact moment I conducted the transfer. 
I believe that this is the reason for his lack of humanity. No, that's not true. Please. Oh, no, it's, it's me. It's me. Thario. What are your orders, father? Shall I kill them? Well, I suppose that is their decision to make. I am not the monster you think I am, Thero. I hope you can finally see that. And no! I am ready to. The father's experiments did not end in failure, as Thariel had suspected, and the results created bodies with souls that were gradually rejecting them, resulting in the inevitable estrangement from the real world. This is what Nessa experienced as she lost the ability to see faces, and what Thariel has been going through as you help him on his quests. Thariel is going mad, and it's the father's fault, but Thariel also would have died without the father's help. And despite Letha's own survival, he was rendered completely emotionless by the procedure, having died exactly as his soul was extracted from his body. The Letha Thariel knew is still gone, leaving nothing but a hollow shell in his image. This changes nothing, but all of this knowledge breaks Thariel. And now you have to choose. Would you help a monster or a murderer? This is the ending that made me want to tell this story. Thariel is difficult, if not impossible, to redeem, but when the game asks us to choose between him and the father, it becomes a strange question. The father is absolutely a monster. What he did to the children of the orphanage was an awful thing, and no matter what his intentions, nothing can excuse that. Not even the knowledge that the orphans would have died anyway makes that better. But we also can't deny that what he did saved the lives of Thariel, Nessa, and Letho. However, his motives were not to save lives, and as Thariel says afterwards, if he hadn't found sick children, he would have used healthy ones. The father was here to learn at all costs. And this phrase, at all costs, is what this story revolves around. Both Thariel and the father are willing to go to any length to accomplish their goals, but the difference between them is what they tell themselves. Where the father has no illusions about what he's done, Thariel is a different case. Thariel is defined by his delusions of justice. Throughout almost this entire story, he's lied to himself and denied any attempt on the player's part to reach out and help him. He believes that his role is a necessary one. Sad as it is, the world needs people like me. All these do-gooders who think they could fight evil without getting their hands dirty are self-righteous idiots. The monsters of this world, the murderers, the tyrants, you need to speak their language if you want to be a threat to them. Everything else is a delusion. And it's by understanding this that we have a clear picture of what Thariel is and could become. He's not a hero but he's definitely on the road to becoming a monster, just like the father. When we're asked to choose between Thariel and the father, we're looking at a choice between the present and the future. Thariel is not someone who wants to be redeemed, because in his eyes, his current acts are making the world a better place. The problem is, he'd burn the world in order to save it. What makes it worse is that he's only doing this for selfish reasons. Within the Relata, you are expected to forsake every part of your past life. Your past does not matter, with one exception. Every member's name is changed to reflect their greatest vice, pride, sorrow, and Thariel's name, Wrath. From the moment Thariel met with Nylok, we see Wrath in his actions. He is burning with anger at a world that does not help those at the bottom and has rationalized this as a righteous anger. He won't accept any other worldview, because it would force him to let go of that anger that's helped him survive this long. Allowing others to help him would break him mentally. And that's exactly why what happens after the fight with the father 
has to happen. Are we all here? Yes, Father. Good. Relaine, the time has come. Liberation awaits us. And you are certain you want to let them live? Yes. Existence is punishment enough. We find Thariel at the end of his rope. He never thought of what would happen after his confrontation with the father. And with the failure of his plan, he has no choice but to process what he's done. How do I feel? Let me think. The father achieved his goal. I learned that I'm one of his creations. A deceased soul in a body made from artificial flesh. And I killed my brother, who I thought was dead. Letho. I killed Letho. You can save Thario, but it requires buying into his worldview enough to stop him from taking the steps he can't come back from. It requires you to be the replacement that he needed after Letho was taken from him. He's right. No one can replace Letho. But you can be the voice of reason. You can talk him down from that roof. And so, I leave you with a question. Would you save a murderer? I'm sorry for everything. 